Our climate is warming and just as important as it is knowing how to protect yourself during severe weather events, it's also important to understand the science behind why it's all happening. Meteorologist Ava Marie talks to the experts. Well, we love the proximity to water here in Maryland, but that's also what puts us at risk for flooding. And in a warming climate, the risk for flooding will be going up. So to talk more about how we can prepare for flood risk here in Maryland, I'm joined now by Chris Strong, the Baltimore Na Washington National Weather Service. And Chris, it's good to talk to you today. I know flooding is a really common risk that we deal with here in Maryland. Yeah, and it's actually the biggest direct weather killer that we have, just the phenomenal power that water, especially moving water, can have. And that's something that everybody needs to be aware of, especially on those big threat days. And given a warmer climate, the atmosphere is able to hold more moisture in general. So the reasoning would be that we would see more rainfall and more flooding events. And it seems like the data is now starting to support that. What are you seeing on your end? Yeah, I mean, we've been hearing that for many years now from the, the climate researchers that, that probably would be an uptick in extreme and, and heavy rainfall events. And that's starting to be what we're seeing. We're doing some local studies here on documented uh, rainfall rates from some of our long-standing stations that have been around for decades. And we're starting to see an increase in, in one hour, or one inch per hour rainfall rates and even two inch per hour and probably even more, but they start getting less frequent for individual spots. Um, but we are starting to see an increase in those really heavy rainfall rates over an hour, over two hours that really cause the biggest and most dangerous problems. Yeah, we see a lot of different types of flooding here in Maryland, not only from the tides and then from widespread rainfall, but those flash flood events can be the ones that really catch people off guard. We saw the big event in Ellicott City cause a lot of damage and destruction as well. So you at the National Weather Service, you all are consolidating some of your efforts to try to help emphasize the difference between the flood events and really put an emphasis on flash flooding. Yes, and it, part of what we're doing is whole, the whole agency is to try to streamline and simplify the amount of messages that we that we throw out there. So it's easier to understand when things come out. And one of those is uh, flood watches. When we issue a flood watch, we don't, let's say, have a flash flood watch out in the eastern part of the area for the potential of flash flooding and a flood watch out to the west. We're just going to call it all a flood watch and let everybody know that there's the potential for flooding. And I think everybody knows, you know, what that generally means. Then once we get down to the warnings for this is happening happening in this particular community, that's when we can be a little bit more detailed, a little bit more refined, call things flash flood or flood or uh, coastal flood for the tidal flooding communities and let people know specifically what's coming for their community and what they need to take action on. And with that being said, one of the great tools we have now in the weather community is the are the weather alerts that get sent right to people's phones. But I will say, I think the trouble is that people are still kind of learning how they work. And sometimes when they're waking them up in the middle of the night, they're prone to turn them off. But I really want you to help emphasize what those alerts mean when, when they're getting them to their phones and why they're important. Yeah, the, the wireless emergency alerts that go out to everybody's cell phones, um, it's, it's done if the tower is in the threat zone and it's done for the most catastrophic of our warning. So it's, it's most of, of what we issue, most of our warnings don't go to that system. It's used by other government agencies in extreme situations as well. But if there's a tornado warning for your community, if there's a flash flood warning for your community for the next you know 30 minutes, 60 minutes, uh, 90 minutes, something like that, if you're in that threat zone, it'll go to your phone and most smartphones these days will activate and let people know that there is that kind of warning. There's been so many success stories uh, with that getting to people's cell phones. I was just, when I was touring the Annapolis tornado last, uh, the damage from the Annapolis tornado last year, so many people got the, the emergency alert right to their phone. They were able to get to shelter and protect themselves. So it's been a great success over the past eight or 10 years that that's been in existence now. Yeah, pretty amazing that we have that technology right in our pockets. Well, thank you, Chris, for yeah. joining us today. I'm glad we can get the word out about flooding here in Maryland. Anytime. Thanks for having me, Ava. So good information there, but I think one thing that people, especially Marylanders, you'll see warnings and watches pop up and it can still be confusing. There's a lot of terms that you have to keep straight. So there's actually a fun way to kind of keep <laughs> it in your mind. So Mima actually made this really mm -hmm. creative graphic uh, to keep in mind watch versus warning. And of course, with the Maryland theme, we're talking crab cakes. <laughs> exactly. So when you see all the ingredients on the table, that's a crab cake watch. So things yeah. 
could come together, but there's no guarantee. Sure. When it's a warning, that thing is sizzling on the pan <laughs> and you're ready to eat. So a watch means the storm ingredients might happen. Warning means it's likely happening where you are. So if you're getting a warning on your phone, it means to take action. Yeah, and at the risk of showing how old we actually are. I mean, back in the day, you just you had a lot of just television or maybe the radio to hear weather uh, warnings and watches. Now, right in the palm of your hand, though. So in some ways, there's no excuse not to know because you can get this information right from your phone wherever you are, even in the middle of yeah. the night. Make sure you go into the settings in your cell phone. You can turn on those emergency alerts, something you can do today to stay safe. Great information, as always. Avery Marie, thank you.